Hello, people. Welcome to another episode of Light On. I'm Sheila, and together, let's go on a magical journey to expand our consciousness. If this is your first time here, welcome. And oh, before you go, please press the subscribe button and the bell icon for good measure. And if you're my returning viewer, thank you so much for your support every time. Our guest today is a divine feminine empowerment leader, cosmic high priestess, master healer, soul mission activator, and gifted multidimensional healer, channel, master energy alchemist. She works with women across the globe, helping them rise into their power and strength. She's my teacher and has initiated me into the Goddess Ascension course. Please help me welcome India Ananda Omra. Hey, India. I'm so excited to be sharing your wisdom with my community. So welcome to my show. Thank you so much for having me. I am excited as well. Before we begin, could you explain the significance of your name? I love that name. Thank you so much. It's, um, it came to me very early on in my journey when I was preparing for a sacred trip with a small sacred community to Egypt. And as we were preparing for a sacred ceremony there that we were really blessed to have in, um, in the Great Pyramid of Giza, we were doing this preparation meditations and I kept he hearing India. And, you know, for a second, because I'm so, so drawn to the country itself, I thought maybe I was guided there, but it kept coming back and coming back. And, uh, and it turned out it's one of my soul names that I was guided to wear to really, that was a moment for me where I really decided to step away from the name and the passports <laughs> and the life that went with it and really committed to, to becoming who I am and who I will be because clearly it's an ongoing journey. So it was a very exciting moment. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and it really just a, a, um, a soul name resonance. So it doesn't have necessarily a worldly explanation like that. It is, it is just the name that I resonate with and I just had beautiful tears come when I've heard it and I just knew that this is a good place <laughs> to be energetic. Nice. So uh, would you tell us a little more about the work that you do? Okay, yeah, absolutely. So one of the, th I do many things. I do a lot of things, but um, I have my own modality that came through, actually that was coming through me all my life that you also <laughs> tried. Um, but what I really am, um, I am a channel, first and foremost, and a guide and teacher of Ascension. And within that, uh, I'm a minister of, of the Yoga of Self Ascension, which is truly a very unique, very high vibrational and a huge library of, of cosmic wisdom that we were blessed that my teacher started bringing in. It's a long lineage and um, that I, I found it very early on as well it came in with the name simultaneously i had a very incredible experience where my life was the human aspect of it so to speak was sort of ending i was going through a very very rough time um and the universe literally rushed to my house so i had a very exciting right so the yoga of self ascension is all about how to live an empowered and anchored ascended life while still in form so it is truly pursuing the purest frequencies of awakening and enlightenment while still in body. So it's definitely a lifetime commitment <laughs> because we all have so many things we need to heal and work through and release. It's more about releasing, right? Because we are all perfect deep down. We are simply divine beings having human experiences. That saying is, is just so true. And it, it has been a life changer for me because Everything that comes through the yoga of self-ascension from the teachings of the Essene um, that many know through, through actually the church, which is, of course, every, every ancient text and every ancient truth has been picked up by some organization, so to speak, and it's being used. But uh, so from the cosmic Essene to the divine directors, blue star born, benevolent ones, all the teachers, ascendant masters came through. And it's incredibly powerful. And what it really goes to show is how loved we are. The truly all the support and the map and how to get through these times is really here and it is really available for all of us and we just need to go in right it's all about releasing 
this incredible, we're, we're all part of this huge societal codependency, right? So it's all about really daring to release those things and, and going within and finding out who you are. So then from our wholeness, we can live because that would be the goal. Instead of seeking outside forces to make us whole, find your wholeness within and then go from there. So when you say that uh, the yoga of self-ascension is all about embodying yeah. it, uh, yeah. what exactly? Embodying the ascended lifestyle, meaning walking the path. So it's, it's really all about completely letting go judgment truly anchoring it in unconditional love and you know these are concepts that we talk about a lot but we don't live them it's like we live it from nine to five or when i'm online or when i'm at a spiritual retreat but it really encourages to to live our lives completely authentically and and transparently 24 7 so what we do what we eat what we watch who we hang out with and it's very easy on, on the path of awakening to fall into the area what we call the spiritualized ego right when we have all the terms when we have all the right things to say when we understand spirituality but we don't fully live it and especially at this moment of global awakening where everybody's stepping into spiritual activism and that's actually a step up from what we refer to as density consciousness so we are all born into forgetfulness and now everybody's awakening to their truth right and that's what we see globally as well, that everybody is very loud about their own truth, which is true for them. And it may totally not be true for us, but it is for them. And right now there's this clashing of, of spiritualized egos, globally speaking. And, and we really see that very loudly playing out um, on our planet. And the yoga of self-ascension really teaches you tools, mental tools, meaning the understandings, the energetics, um, incredible energy practices that you can really use to stay outside of it and anchor outside of it so not just to kind of be there in our head right to say i'm awake and i'm this and that and then go about hating my neighbor so that's that's we all go through that it's not really a place of judgment either but when we really recognize that there's so much more and that we can reach that more see the energy shifted so much in, in the 70s, there was a big boom of energy, right? Then now the, around 2000 and 2012, all these energies, it's all about the opening of the veil, which means that we are now able to access all the energies, all the awakening, all the higher realms, all of us. Because previously it used to be, you know, one teacher at a time, whether it was the Buddha or whether it was Allah, whoever it was, right? Whichever, all the big teachers were here they just now, right, they belong to different, <laughs> but they all come, came to do the same thing, to represent the higher teachings. And now we have the opportunity, and that's why you see such a big boom in spiritual entrepreneurs and teachers and healers, because now it's the time of the thousand teachers, which is actually a lot more than that. But like, we are now at the time where many teachers need to rise so we can accomplish the global awakening. And the Yoga of Self Ascension helps you with every step of that. So what brought you into this uh, body of work? Um, I was a, um, oh, wow. I was a very, from, I guess the outside world would say I was a very problematic child. <laughs> uh, from my perspective, I was a very lonely person who I didn't have the words at the time, but I was very awake. So for me, entering a room and being aware of everyone's thoughts, everyone's feelings and what transpired there for the past couple of hundred years was like the norm. And for me, these things became very overwhelming. So eventually I went from a very open child to a very, I was, I was having severe panic attacks from a very young age. I was very depressed, anorexic. So I became very, very sick, um, mentally, emotionally, physically, pretty much on all levels. Um, and then eventually I broke. Uh, close to 28 I almost left my body and at that moment I just I really had this feel I always searched I tried to draw, join the church but I never understood the limitations and that I'm, I'm a bad person or I'm a sinner especially as a woman and so forth right when we're talking about the catholic church I said yeah well that does not sit well with me I was very awake I was very against the system in every way the one that's crumbling right now and of course my especially my inner child's heart is so happy about it because it's happening. I'm not alone. Um, but I just, I couldn't, I used to remember just looking at the word and thinking, I don't understand how people don't see what's right in our faces, that this is not okay. And it made me sick, like it, it totally. And 
And then I had a lot of traumatic experiences as well, of course, because when we're healers, when we come in with a big mission, we tend to attract a lot of stuff that tries to stop us. <laughs> and I did a really, really uh, large amount of, of traumas I managed to pull in. And, and then I almost died when I was 28. And that was a moment where, um, where I just had to make a choice. Am I going to you know, try and give it my all again one more time because I really felt like this is it. Like this is the last time I'm ever trying again. I was not wrong and I wasn't right either because I had to try them one more time, but that was a different kind of choice. And um, what happened to be honest with you is I was on the beaches of Mexico, which is uh, uh, where a soul country for me that I very deeply resonate with. Uh, I was about to get married to an, uh, another abusive man, which I had a great collection of in my life. And, and I was sitting on the beach and I just felt it was over, but I was at the same time asking. And I just heard this voice saying, you're just beginning. And I thought, what's, am I hallucinating? And then the stars started to move. And it was, I could, even now I lose my ability to speak. I was speechless. The energy that I felt, everything was so tangible. And I kept hearing, you're just beginning, you're just beginning. So I jumped up and I ran back and I canceled my wedding at that moment. Like I said, it's up, off, I'm not doing this. And next morning on, I decided to love life. But of course, that's not how things go because it's a few weeks later, I got a diagnosis that I might be developing um, cancer. Uh, and I said, okay, so here's another test. I can do this. And I remember the only way I can do this is if I choose joy, because if you have no life joy, if you have no will to live, you don't stand a chance. So I ran back to Mexico, this time on my own. <laughs> and I took myself with a little e-reader and I'll never forget, I asked my father to download a few books for me that had to do with the Mayans because of my previous archeological studies. And he downloaded a book that had nothing to do with the Mayans. It was the book of the teachers that I found then, which was uh, Mayan Sunrise. And I remember the first time I opened that book, which was already sharing the teachings of self-ascension, I felt like the word stuff my word definitely, or my word just started moving for the first time. I felt like somebody ran my soul. And the first time ever, I didn't feel alone on the planet. And I read that these teachers were in Guatemala. So just a few short weeks later, <laughs> I landed there and then eventually I moved there to live there, to really embrace their teachings, to work. I had the blessing to work with the Mayan elders and shamans there and really just step outside of 3D step outside of the mainstream world and and just really fully surrender to this path so the universe you know the universe always comes to our aid they really always help us we just have to be willing to leap and do crazy things i mean from europe everybody thought i was crazy moving to guatemala and it was one incredible journey <laughs> why did you choose to work only with women i would say and that is shifting a little bit now, actually. So it's a great question. I just started to open up my public uh, Facebook group for men. I started to work with women at first for my own safety because all the trauma that I had around men, um, and I always managed to pull that in. Unfortunately, when it's in our energy, we keep attracting the same stuff back. So, and I have found, and now it's changing. I'm very happy to say there's changing that, you know, the spiritual community is so ripe for, <laughs> for, for men who want to take advantage of women, unfortunately. So that's, that's a reality. I've met many of those teachers. They're very popular teachers for you. It's, you know, just because it's a spiritual word, it's not immune to all the other stuff that's in the word, which is people taking advantage of each other. And, and not to say, uh, women can do stuff because we can and i even had women try to literally emotionally sexually abuse me on a call which was just i thought it's so funny of the universe showing up and telling me it's about the energy uh but it's actually shifting now because i have reached a new level of my healing and my journey and now i'm just i'm just ready to be and i had the blessing to work with quite a few men but i would add that focusing on women is in a way important for me because because of the divine feminine energy that's rising and to help empower that. But it's also good to know that the divine feminine empowerment, it's, it's irrespective of gender because that is just an energy after all. So I'm really opening up now to invite those men in as well into our circles that are really ready to 
first of all, honor the feminine in others and in themselves as well, because what is the feminine? It's all about creativity. It's all about flow. It's all about allowing. It's, it's a very powerful energy. So I'm here definitely to support that in all kinds of ways. And now including men as well, even though I may still be mainly focused on women, but, but the gates are open for, for those who, who say, yes, I'm, I'm ready to really be the pioneer who's ready to own their healed and empowered masculine in a, in a beautiful way. And that also means honoring the divine feminine. When you talk about divine feminine healing and when yeah. you offer it to men, I know that there are a lot of heart-centered men who are willing to accept that they have a feminine energy within them, which they need to accept. But there is a whole universe out there of people who are not aware of these energies, nor are they willing to accept it. So how do you bring it out into the world? Oh yeah, well, there's a huge attack on the divine feminine globally, everywhere. Women are being attacked in ways that just, <laughs> I, don't even, like, I don't even know what to say. Currently, I'm, I'm, I'm in Eastern Europe and what's happening here is incredible. We just had our, our, our government say that, you know, unless your main aspiration in life is to have a lot of kids, something is wrong with you. Um, and of course, my rebellious soul is like, oh, don't ever meet me in person, please. So the divine feminine has been the norm on this planet up until like 2000 years ago. So it, at the time of, of that we, as a beloved master, I work with Yeshua so much and he refers to himself as Yeshua, but we like to call him the Christ or Jesus or however. And he was an incredible, incredible brother and healer and teacher who did not belong to any religion. Uh, but that was a moment in time when energies came together in a way that decided, let's use this opportunity now, let's twist this opportunity and let's repress the divine feminine. Because up until then, and if you just if you just think about even just all the Hindu cultures, how beautifully the divine feminine is there, how powerful, and that's the norm, you know? And it's very interesting because actually the yoga of self-ascension has a lot to do with, with actually the Hindu like it's very interesting because the Shiva works with the Hishwa. So those energies come together. They're actually one energy line, which is so interesting because you would perceive it in this world as being two totally opposing religions, but they're not. But that time was the moment where, let's put it this way, the darkness and this beautiful polarity of you know experience of duality where we have darkness, we can deny it, it's here. It's not the truth of us. It's not the truth of darkness either, but it's here. And it decided it used that opportunity to repress us. And it has only been 2000 years. And I say that consciously because humanity and everything that's here has been here much longer than we think. This entire experience is much longer and much more complex than we think. So from that 2000 years is not that long, but of course it has been long because this 2000 years has been spent with, with killing women every chance they got, we're repressing them any way we can. And my personal journey has, has been a lot about that all the time. Um, it, has, it has been very powerfully, I have been judged myself. I have been, just because I enjoyed my looks, I enjoyed myself as a woman, I like to dance, I'm good at whatever. And I have been called everything all the time. And that led to my breakdown as well. So I'm very passionate about it. And to, to really help people understand the divine feminine, it's a balance, right? It's just we hijacked everything, like every word is so hypercharged with opinions by now. It's very hard to say things. This is why words are the greatest weapon. They're the most destructive force on this planet. We will think it's you know global warming, but honestly, the words we use and attack each other with all the time is, is the worst. Um, and beautifully, the yoga of self-ascension and at the end we'll experience that actually teaches us how to go past the throat. So just use that as an extension of our heart because it is really about balance and we all need it. We all need the divine feminine. It's not about, of course, uh, uh, a more density ways twisted version again, you know, is, is feminism like that everybody attacks so much, but that's just, just, just a way how the energy and, and a lot of women choose to kind of try to break through that wall that was placed there. A man can function at his best when there's a divine feminine counterpart present and the divine feminine functions best when there's a divine masculine. And again, irrespective of gender, because I know it's so easy to say, ha, that means men and women. No, that means someone with a man energy and male and with a female and 
bringing them together. And first and foremost, we have to practice that with ourselves. Why does that matter? Because if we want to be healthy, if we want to be successful, anything we want in life depends on this balance. Even the men of this world that <laughs> that so many are rebelling against right now, even they are not okay. Look how, ma- how much prostate cancer, how many strokes, how much they're dying. They're not happy. I mean, I know that from a repressed or oppressed state, looking at those who seemingly have power, we look at them and like, wow, good for them. But the truth is nobody is okay because as long as we're denying the divine feminine essence of our world, we're denying our well-being. It's part of everything. It's when those two come together, it creates a perfect whole. It's it's the perfection. That's that's why it's so beautiful to connect. That's why it's so beautiful to have the right partner. And that's why sensuality and sexuality are so beautiful because when those are the deepest aspects of that kind of connection. And when two people connect that way, honestly, authentically in true connection, in that moment source, God appears. It's really there. It's the closest we can get. That's why it's so important. That's why we need each other because they all feel like, oh, we need each other, right? Because let's remember, this is a word of separation. We came here to experience what you cannot experience anywhere in this infinite universe and universes, which is being completely separate because we're always together. We're always one. There's always telepathy and all kinds of sensory experiences. We're always aware of our divinity except here. And this first step towards experiencing that again is bringing in the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies, which are just simply two parts of the whole. And, and they create an incredible experience when they come together. This is so beautifully said. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got lost in your words. I forgot what is it that I wanted to ask you next. I was initiated by you into the Goddess Ascension Codes. Could you explain what those ascension codes are for the for our viewers? Yeah, it's it's one of the many gifts that are coming for us, you know, for, for this time of ascension, because we all carry different energies, every single one of us. I so often hear when people say, wow, what do I have to offer? And the truth is we first have to be willing to kind of get started and show up, and then those things will appear. For me, the goddess ascension codes has been with me all my life without realizing it. I used to kind of doodle these things. And it's so interesting that I always ended up doing the same shapes. And I thought, you know, maybe I just liked it. And that was like, I was, I was 10, 12 when I first started to kind of draw those. And I made, you know, I gave it no significance because I didn't understand. But when I was already on the path and I've been learning a lot myself and then eventually started healing and then later teaching, it kept coming back. And and then once I sat down, took out the time and really just went into this state, well, the best you can with a child around, but I did my best. And um, all these symbols came together into an energy. And, and I was just kind of crying. It was, it was such a big moment because it meant so much for me. And, and the goddess ascension calls what it really is, is an energetic opportunity, right? Because it attunes your chakras to um, these uh, symbols that I call them an intelligent system. Like I always laugh because I always say, give me a more, um, because, you know, (laughs) in this world, we we tend to have a certain expectation of how one explains a program. And I always say, if you want me to always give you the 20 points of this is what you get, this is what you get from the program. No, with these programs, you have to feel it to the energy because what this does for you First of all, it's, it's a fulfilling of a destiny. It's saying, I came here and one of the many things I said I'll do is carry this divine feminine energy empowerment because it also, it's really what it is. It offers you an energetic empowerment. It offers you a frequency that keeps growing with you. And the reason why I call it intelligent system is because what I've noticed first for myself is when you put these um, beautiful symbols in your chakras, they always act differently. It's like they know what you need in that moment in that chakra to help you to get to the next next best level, next highest energy where you can be. And, and then it came together into a beautiful program uh, that became a, a modality, something that I really plan to hopefully teach. I, I said I'm going to do it again live this year, but I didn't. So that will be for next year. And then it, 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 yeah, it became, it became one of the programs that actually I saw the most. So it's, it's definitely something that people 
resonated with and heard and and I had beautiful stories it helped me heal my um, feminine body part issues like my my periods were always very painful and after this program it's tough because it's more than that it also offers you a journey of self-healing and and reconnecting with yourself would you be able to guide our viewers to a session to just give them a taste of what your sessions look like i know i've been part of your sessions and i really really love it so i would love my viewers also to have sure. what i thought um well what i felt guided to do is for share uh sh show you energetically an experience with the ascended chakra system and first just tell you a little bit about it so you understand what we're doing because i honestly think that from the teachings of self ascension if this is the one thing that you hear that you take in and that you remember it can help you change your life because it's one of the most fundamental energy shifts just going on on our planet right now and if you understand it then then you can work with it yourself. You can help yourself in stepping outside of the constraints of the third dimension is really has become the fear dimension now. See, the fourth dimension used to be such a romantic place because people used to a little bit romanticize astral projection and so forth. But the truth is the fourth dimension is a place of of uh, unfinished business <laughs> in all kinds of ways, a lot of chords and a lot of entities and beings that are in no way more uh, evolved than we are. They just simply don't have a corporal body and therefore, you know, our brain can perceive it like, ooh, they're, they can fly, they're better. But no, it's, it's, it's not, it's like, it's like the 3D on steroids, to be honest. And what happened is that the fourth dimension, because of this big opening that's happening, collapsed into the third. So the third dimension is a very intense place. So if, if any of your beautiful viewers are feeling like they're overwhelmed, they're in fear, I can't get out of my own negativity and doubt and worry, it's because you're stuck in that energy and no wonder it's insanely hard to get out. It was not meant to be this hard. So I always say to everyone, if you're on the path and if you're trying at all, please celebrate yourself because you're doing so much more than the 99% of the planet. So it's important that we empower ourselves on this journey because it is hard. And understanding the ascended chakra system can help us make sense of a lot of things. See, the first three chakras, let's start there um, before I guide you through it to explain, the first three chakras used to be safety, sex, and power, right? That's kind of how we relate it to it. But that's the old paradigm. But if you think about it, that's what the whole word is about, is it not? Am I safe? Do I have enough? Can I eat? That's a big part of the word, right? Because even though the developed countries are like loud on the news and whatever, but if you live in Guatemala, if you live in India, you know very well that the majority, like what you see on TV has nothing to do with reality, right? People are fighting for their very most basic rights to, to just be safe, to have a home, to have something to eat and not to fear for their life. So that's a very big topic around the planet. That's why I'm so grateful. I had so many years, right, to, to live. I think we need to ship up every European at least once in their lifetimes and, and, and North American and send it to another country so that these developed countries can, because you don't know, you know, the developed countries live in such a bubble that they don't, they're not aware of their privilege. We need to teach ourselves and we need to teach them. So, and, and what you see on the word is really first three chakras. So the first all around safety, the second sex, right? Even the divine feminine energy is falling into that and power. Now, as the planetary energies are shifting, our energies are shifting with it, whether you're in a spiritual path or not, whether you're conscious of it or not, everybody's ascended chakra is opening, whether it can open or not. Of course, that's that's largely a question whether they're actually knowing, you know, aware of it or if they're working on themselves and the majority, majority are not. That adds to people going crazy because there's this huge opening that everybody feels even if they can't explain, they know something is happening and it's really scary. That's why you see a lot of people regressing back into their old ways as well, because it's just too much, right? Because it starts opening up. And what happens is that the first three chakras in the ascended chakra system turn into peace, love, and joy. And they become a foundation for the ascended chakra system that starts in the heart. And it opens up from the heart Heart, it stabilizes the throat and then comes into the third eye and it opens up into what we call an exploded crown. And I don't know if I can show you right now just a little bit of that image. And I wish I could bring it. I'll give it to you. Maybe you can put it in or share it with your beautiful viewers that 
because that is our ascended chakra system. So a 12 pointed chakra system that goes outside of our body as well. And that helps us directly connect into fifth dimension and far above. And it really gives you the opportunity to be able to be here and be completely unaffected by what's around you. So you can truly be a beacon of hope and light. Now, the other thing before I guide you so that it can really make sense to you is that our chakras changing their shapes. We used to refer to them as circular. And we also were taught and still teach in a lot of ways that we're sending our energy down and we're anchoring in the planet. Now, beloved Gaia, she's cleansing. She is in a big detox period that's going to last for a while because every energy that we ever sent out, every energy that we ever sent into her is still there. It's not true that everything was always transmuted and so forth. There are seven, eight billion people on this planet constantly releasing energy. And because of the safety bubble we lived in as third dimension, so we can stay separated from the rest, it's all here. So now it's going through a huge experience of release and release. So anchoring into her is not kind to her, it's not kind to us. But the good thing is we don't have to anchor here to feel grounded and safe. When we anchor into this cosmic alignment, you're completely stable and you're really stable. So things cannot get to you. And what's going on as that shift is happening for everyone is that the circular chakras are becoming infinite symbols. So the first three become a simple infinite. The heart becomes a double interlocking infinite because we're stabilizing the energy and we're sending the energy up, right? Because this will be our new foundation, our new root chakra. Now the throat becomes just one infinite symbol. It's not interlocking because we're stabilizing the throat. We're not using it anymore as the weapon it is, right? We're allowing it to be simply a channel for our heart so that we can experience our truth as a lived experience. It's very powerful. And then the third eye again becomes that interlocking and the same goes for the crown, which also opens up, but just, just to not overwhelm everyone, that is also an interlocking. So it's all about sending the energy up. So I want to guide all of you through just a little bit of a meditation of to feel what that's like and to allow yourself to relax into that energy and to remember that whenever you feel you're lost or worried or you're experiencing any emotion other than joy and trust and faith and abundance, if you're experiencing anything else, then you're in the first three chakras, then you're in the realm of 3D. And it's so good to know because when you realize that it's actually a choice, right? That's, that's one of the truths that our ego resents and resists so much because we say, but I'm suffering, but you don't know my life story, but you don't see what's around me. How could I feel good, right? It feels almost enraging at times when you hear, but you can choose. It's because then we're stuck in this victim triangle, the victim energy of the 3D. That's the norm. So everybody have mercy on yourself if you feel that way. I used to be, I always say, I used to be a professional victim. I always felt that way. So I really get it. But we can really choose. And when we realize, wait a minute, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just stuck in this energetic stream that I don't enjoy. So let me get out of it. And a wonderful way to help you suck it out of it is to breathe into your first chakras and to allow those things, what we're going to do right now together to expand and to start to anchor in your heart and say, you know what? I choose a new story. I choose to go past my resistance that says, but I want to suffer. Unfortunately, our ego gets addicted to suffering. It quite literally creates a... Um, a chemical imbalance in our brains. You, you can get used to abuse and emotional suffering just as much as you can get addicted to any kind of substances. It's, it happens physically in you. So we've got to have a little patience and a lot of mercy on ourselves. And first and foremost, tenacity to say steadfast commitment. I am sticking with this. I am choosing my joy. So many people are saying it's true. Let me believe it's true for me too, because it is. There are no exceptions. Everybody's included in this awakening if you choose to be and start lifting. So if we're ready, then let me guide you through a little bit of a meditation that will help you do just that. So if you're, whenever listening to this while you're driving or something, please don't, <laughs> because you can never know when a big hit of energy will come. So whenever you're listening to guided meditations, I really encourage you to do that when you are safe and then you can focus on yourself. So Given that all the circumstances come aligned for you right now, let's just breathe. I really invite you to place your hand on your heart center because when you play, when you breathe into the heart center, 
in the center of the chest. It's not just the heart chakra that's there. It is an incredibly powerful portal to your soul consciousness and to your soul self, to your true self that you are. And it's all here. There's so much here. We can do a whole other session about that once, but it's a lot of stuff that's in your heart center. So when you place your hand on it, and really feel yourself, it's almost as if though, when we say breathe into your heart, we kind of mean imagine that you're just anchoring the breath and everything that you are in that space. And just kind of say, I am here because you are right there. I am here and just be there. Allow yourself to arrive into this moment so that you may be fully present in this beautiful body and send a wave of appreciation through the body. Beloved body, I love you. I know I judge you and I get all kinds of into resistance about you sometimes, but I love you because we are not our body. We are here in our bodies. This is our home. So send it some love and, and notice how it relaxes right away. <sighs> Make sure that your shoulders are dropped, that you're not holding too tightly to them. And then just you can release your hands and close your eyes if you feel safe to do so and just breathe. And as you are breathing, our beautiful archangels are here and your guides are all surrounding you right now, offering you extra energetic protection. So you can truly relax knowing that you are safe in this moment, that you can let go of all stress, all worries, that this is your moment to reconnect and to allow yourself to center in, in an even higher and newer energy for yourself. So as you are sitting in the center of this beautiful loving cocoon that surrounds you, bring your attention just below your chakra system, just below the spine outside of the body and feel that there's a beautiful golden pyramid, a pyramid of liquid. It feels like the energy is moving as if liquid was moving. And it appears right below your body, right below your chakra system, just below the spine. And you can already notice that energy there, like it's, it simply wishes to connect and it feels so natural to have it there. And as you give yourself permission to open up and connect with the golden energy, beautiful infinite symbols laying down horizontal infinite symbols are starting to come in. Entering the first chakra, the second, the third, and into the heart, the throat, the third eye, your crown, and outside of it. Just see them as they keep coming. It's like a fountain of golden infinite symbols that are coming in and rushing through your chakra system, opening it up, or right, sort of introducing the energies. And if you feel any resistance, Anywhere, just breathe, send your breath to that area and, and I love you and allow it to relax and come into alignment with this experience. And now bring your attention to your first chakra and remember chakra goes both to the front and to the back, sort of like two funnels. And let's open them up. So while this beautiful golden energy is still rushing through you, we are going to take in a big breath from this beautiful cocoon of energy that surrounds you. And it looks like crystalline light because it is, because all the beautiful support that we reach out for comes so much further than the fifth dimension. It comes from the 33rd dimension of crystalline realms and above. And you're already working with them, whether you realize it or not. But right now, just give yourself the conscious permission to take in a big breath of this energy around you and feel yourself breathing it in as it rushes in through the nose and kind of touches, rushes through the brain and feel it relax. And then allow it to come all the way down into your first chakra. And feel the first chakra opening up with every breath. And notice around it, the pelvis area also relaxing feel that. And if you feel like maybe you're pulling in your tummy or that you're tense there, consciously focus on relaxing the physical aspects with it. 
So keep breathing into that first chakra and opening it up and, and feel as those beautiful golden infinite symbols are rushing through you, that it's as if though your first chakra is becoming both to the front and to the back, it's starting to show up instead of just a circular funnel as these beautiful golden infinite symbols. Wow, I noticed that, that right away, it gives a sense of stability because we don't need anything outside ourselves to feel stable and even grounded. And now bring your attention to the second chakra that's just a little bit below or around the navel area. And again, bringing in this beautiful crystalline light through your breath with the breath into that area. Feel as you're breathing it down, it's almost rushing down into the second chakra. And notice that it starts to push the energy out towards the front and to the back. If you feel there's any kind of tension there, you might even kind of stretch or move your <clears throat> spine as it feels comfortable. Assisting the physical always assists the energetic and the other way around. We're a beautiful sacred union of energies working together. And then allowing these forms in the second chakra to kind of start to turn into that golden infinite symbol as well to the front and to the back. And allowing now the energy and your focus to come to the third chakra, just around the pit of the stomach, your power center. I feel that especially, it's a global experience. We all kind of have it close. <laughs> so feel that, breathe into it. And it's almost like a golden sun starting to shine through to the front and to the back. And then allow it to turn into beautiful infinite symbols. So feel into the first three chakras again before we move on. Notice how it is. Notice if you kind of need any kind of adjustment. And remember, if you feel like, oh, but I'm not feeling energies, loves pretend. You do feel your body. So notice how your body is feeling and just use your imagination. It is working. That's how we all start. So kind of anchoring these energies, bring your attention to the first chakra. And just feel or declare, I am safe. I am safe because I am here. I am safe in this body. I am an eternal being having a magnificent experience as a human in this body. And I am safe. And I bring your focus to the second chakra. I am loved. I am important. My inspiration is real. My ideas are valid. I have so much to give to this world. My uniqueness, my stories, my funny jokes, my unique personality. I am here because I matter. I just feel that because you do matter. You're not a waste of space. God didn't make a mistake putting you here. You are here on purpose by a grand design. You were chosen from so many volunteers that they couldn't fit on this planet. And you were chosen to be here, trust that. And now bring all this into the third chakra and just know that you can, I can do anything. I am empowered in my knowing. I am empowered in my worth. And really just be in that energy. And now let's come to our heart. You might want to place your hands again in the center of your chest and breathe into that space and start to notice how it's opening up. and feel the greatest golden glow coming forth, both towards the front of the chest and in the back between the shoulder blades. Feel a golden sun illuminating your heart center. Notice it's shooting down energy, supporting the first three. 
It's shooting down energies through your throat. Notice how the beautiful golden rays, golden sun rays are going through your throat. It's even warming it up. If you feel any discomfort, that's normal. And just give yourself permission. I'm releasing all the words that harm me and others. I'm safe in my truth and I'm safe to express my truth. I am safe to know my truth and I'm safe to express my truth. And allow yourself to just feel that. Feel it just cleansing that area and feel it shooting up into the third eye. The beautiful golden light coming out of it as well to the front and to the back. I just declare that I am willing to see my life the way it is without denial. I'm willing to forgive everyone, including myself. And I'm willing to see everything as is. So I made open my greater vision because I am safe. I am loved and all is well. And now allow this energy, this golden energy to shoot out through the crown, through the top of your head, almost creating this fountain coming in all around showering your beautiful energy field and auric field with golden light and feel yourself as you're connecting in there this beautiful crystalline light coming in towards you all the way from the 33rd dimension connecting through the fifth so to offer you more energetic anchorship and it comes into you and feel the safety you know everything you have an infinite amount of divine wisdom available to you at all times. Let go of the need to know, let go of the need to seek for the sake of seeking and know that you're safe, that you are loved and that you're ready. Beloved ones, feel this energy as this is the beginning of activating your ascended chakra system and notice the safety, the empowerment and the grounding energy that you experience. I feel our beloved Archangel Zadkiel and Metatron and Michael here. And they just want to let you know that they love you and they're here to support you. You're ready to anchor in your empowerment and we're blessed to have your presence. Thank you so much. Stay with this energy if you can. And I want to thank you, Sheila, for this amazing opportunity. I really hope, I always try to pronounce your name right. I hope I did it right. I'm sending you all my love and to all of you and have a beautiful experience. Namaste. So that was India. And what a fascinating session, right? I hope you love her as much as I do. Connect with her and let her help you create magic in your life. If you love this video, give it a thumbs up and share. You don't know who needs to hear this message. Let's spread the light, folks. Mm -hmm.